What's up, creative coders? Ready to explode your coding skills? Today, we're diving into a mind-blowing 3D effect using 3.js and JavaScript. Are you ready to make your transitions epic? Let's go. Click. I uh, love that. Cool, today we're gonna build this effect. I'm gonna create a new scene. I'm gonna add a hemisphere light and then add a box. And I wanna make that box, I'm gonna modify the geometry. I'm gonna make it 16 by nine is the ratio I'm looking for. So nine height and the width will be 16. And the depth, let's make it 0 0.3. That looks pretty good to me. There is the wall that's gonna shatter. I'm gonna modify the geometry for this to add divisions. 64, 36, and let's see what that looks like. Yeah, lots of subdivisions. Let's export uh, GLTF, import my GLTF downloads folder. Okay. Object, quick effects, cell fracture. You may not see it here. If, if that's the case, come over to edit preferences and then click on add-ons. Type in cell fracture and make sure to just check this box next to cell fracture, okay? Two fifty six. Okay. So much better. Hide the wall. Look at that. Doesn't that look good? I think that looks so good. Let's export this son of a gun. Export GLTF slash GLB. I'm going to put it on my desktop as wall fractured. And just save my scene. Quit Blender. Come back over to here. Let's get started by importing our model. Um, did I go? Do I need to review the markup real quick? Real quick, let's review the markup. This is a little bit different than we usually do. Um, typically, we create the canvas in the JavaScript, add it to the DOM. This time, we have an, ex uh, an element in the markup right here. And we're going to say, use that in our JavaScript 3.js setup. Um, and I have some content behind it. You can't see the content. If I were to come in here and say alpha is true, then you could see, well, almost see class, whoops, class equals rendered. Now you can see the stuff behind my transparent canvas. I'm getting ahead of myself. So, Interesting. Let's leave this transparent thing here. And there's that um, where I define the canvas element. I'm just grabbing it with this directive here. Um, great. Let's import that GLTF uh, wall chunks file. Let's get rid of this cube. And we don't need that. And let's import it. We're going to need a GLTF loader first. So const um, loader equals a new new G, G L T F one of these <clears throat> a loader um, I don't know why you're struggling with that import thank you and there's that import statement and we're going to loader dot load the path to the GLTF, which in this case is slash assets slash fractured. I like it up here. And then this callback method, which I like to put up here too. I don't like that formatting. So what the heck's going on here? GitHub Copilot remembered what I wrote before 
and it just spit it up for me too just now I'll, I'll need that except I want it to be white and I'm gonna make it a mesh basic material because I really like seeing the wireframe from the get-go um, we need a const wall uh, group it's really wall chunks group like that and I want a scene dot um, yes that's gonna be true and scene dot uh, I'll get to you all right I'm adding the update method but oh boy thanks github copilot it, jumping way ahead let's just comment this out I just want to add it to the scene for crying out loud thank you um great well we got rid of that and is there an error yeah there's an error i can't find the wall why not oh because it's got a different name and let's let's figure out what that name is it's really called wall fractured dot glb like so okay <clears throat> Let's load it. Once the load is done, we'll add it to the all the children to the group using the spread operator. Dumps the contents of this editable object, this array, into this one. <clears throat> um, and then we're going to loop over all of those children, assign them this wall mat material, and then stoke their user data objects with some properties that we'll use in the animation later like a rate of rotation and velocity. And we're just setting these to random values. Yay, fun. I want to pull out the solid wall, the, the entire wall. I can find it because its name, I happen to know its name is wall. So just give me that one, pull it out of wall chunks and add it to the scene. Okay. Let's see what that looks like. Save it. It doesn't look like anything. Um, maybe if I crank up this, this light here. Let's see if there's any errors. Oh yeah, wall chunks is not defined. My bad, I, I'm calling it something different, wall chunks group. Um, uh -huh -huh. Wall is not defined, right. I am, I'm also gonna have to say let wall. Boom. So that's not great. Let's temporarily leave the wall chunks visible and hide the wall. Wall.visible equals false. Like so. And now we can just see those wall chunks. Want to make sure to enable zoom. Yeah. I just think that looks really cool. Cool. Well, let's disable zoom again. I'm disabling zoom so that we can use, we can scroll with our mouse. Great. Let's reverse this where I hide all the chunks and unhide the wall and turn off the wireframe. Where, where is that material here and make it a mesh standard material. And we should see a white screen and no errors. Great. We've imported it and set up our properties for our wall chunks. And we've got a hemisphere light. Let's change this hemisphere light to a couple of directional lights. Like so, got a couple of directional lights. It's a little bit dimmer, isn't it? Tiny bit dimmer. Let's add the call to action text. The call to action text is set up in this helper method here. I'm gonna say, const text mesh is equal to um, no get text mesh and I'm not going to pass any options and I'm going to set its position and add it to the scene but I want its position to be one forward in the z-axis and we have an error we didn't import the text mesh import this helper method I've got here get text mesh from get text mesh. I need to have this .js in here for some reason. You might know. I don't know. Um, let's see if there's any errors. 
can't set. Oh, I need to await it. This get text mesh helper method is asynchronous, meaning that it's it's not instantaneous. It's going to return a promise instead of returning a mesh. So we need to await that. And uh, the reason it's asynchronous is so that we can load this font. Um, here's what that looks like. Just add the await keyword where you're loading the text here. Await. And now we have that. And you can pass in some options like text is equal to click to enter. That's great. And the hex value could be something different like red, for example, if you wanted. But I don't want. I want it to be black. Great. We've got our wall chunks loaded in our wall. We've got our lights set up. We've got our text. Um, next thing to do is to add uh, event listeners so that we can click and animate it. Let's add, let's start with click listener document dot add event listener. I want it to be pointer down that way we'll get, what do we get? Touch events as well. Console dot log pointer down. Let's see what that looks like. Pointer down works great. Um, let's talk all this is really simple is exploding equals true. Okay. I'm going to add that up here. Let is exploding equal false. Okay, so it just toggles exploding. Super. Um, let's add a line here. If is exploding is equal to true, true, then call this update method wall chunk. Oh, that's interesting. Wall chunks group dot user data dot update. Great. Why are you giving me what is why is this red here? Oh, id. Okay. I'm also going to want to uh, make sure it's visible. Let's see. And let's go ahead and define that. Use this code that GitHub Copilot hoisted for us earlier. What's happening here? This is the main thing that's happening here. I'm looping over all the children in the group and updating each one of them. I'm saying, hey, if you're not out of view, the camera is at um, Z equals five. Let's make this Z. If you're not out of view, that is if you're less than eight in the Z axis in front of the camera uh, with a little buffer, Go ahead and add your position, add that velocity property we created earlier to your position, and also this explosive force to kind of accelerate it. I can call it accelerative explosive force. And then just some random rotation. Okay, let's see how that works. Look at that. It works. However, we're not seeing the page behind it, and that click to enter is still there. I don't want that to still be there. So let's hide that when we click. Um, do I want to hide it there? Where's the best place to hide it? I think I think I want to keep this nice and clean. So I'm going to put it in here. Visible equals false. So now that'll hide that. I also want to show the HTML. I've added a class called rendered. Which, which changes the text color and adds the background image so that we don't get a flash of unstyled content. Here's how to, how to make the background visible. I'm just gonna const container. How about this markup? No. Content is equal to document.getElement by ID container. Eh, whatever. And then we'll say um, content, whoop, tent dot class list. 
dot add rendered like so and now when I click you should see the background in there oh my god we just finished just like that boom some things to experiment with are to change the appearance of the explosion also make it so you can redo it without having to reload that would be cool um you could play around with using physics an engine like rapier for example to create a different effect i like the idea that the pieces as they fly toward the camera will bounce off the camera so that might be interesting to add that um as always, thanks for coming by. Really appreciate it. Love making these videos. Uh, if you'd like to support me in making these videos, you can do so over at patreon.com. But it really helps a lot. Thanks so much. Leave your comments below. Like, subscribe, and make sure to check back for uh, every week for more content. See you next time.